Hey guys, so today we're gonna to be looking at chapter 14. Chapter 14, chapter 14. In the textbook, um, it is all about the five seven chord, how to uh, part right for the five seventh chord, and most importantly, how to resolve the five seven chord to usually one um, and sometimes six. So the biggest point here, I can sum up half of the chapter in one sentence. When resolving a five seven chord, resolve the seventh of the chord down and the third of the chord up. There you go. Remember that one rule for the rest of this chapter. The seventh of the chord goes down, the third of the chord goes up. Okay, let's get into it a little more. Okay, the first part of the chapter is kind of a review. It's just kind of relearning and getting quicker and better at uh, writing uh, major minor seventh chords in certain keys and with given certain parts of the chord. So for instance, let's say we're in bass clef and we're given this note and it tells us this is the fifth of a five seven chord. Write the five seven chord and then tell us what key we're in. So if that's the fifth, I would start with building your snowman. So we need the root, we need the third, We've got the fifth, and we need the seventh. Now, your approach might be different whether you're given the fifth, the root, the third, or the seventh. Regardless of which note you're given, I would try to get the root figured out pretty quickly. So, we know that between the root and the fifth, we should have a perfect fifth. So, let's see what we have. D to A. We can't change the A, but we would change the D if this wasn't a perfect fifth. But is D to A a perfect fifth? If you said no, then you're wrong because perfect fifth is, uh, a D to A is a perfect fifth. So that means D is the correct root. So now we have our root. So now we know we're just making a D7 chord. Okay, and go about your normal process of building a D7 chord. Hopefully we're getting quick at these. Um, and we don't have to think in half steps the whole way up, but we've got D should be F sharp, major third, A we know is correct, and then from D to C, we need a minor seventh to make a D7 chord because it's a major minor seven chord. So is D to C a minor seventh? Yes, it already is, so no accidental needed on the C. And we have our D7 chord, we've written it correctly. Now, last step, we have to say if D7 equals 5-7, what equals 1? Okay. So the question mark here is what equals 1? So you can think of this as two ways, down a fifth or up a fourth. Usually it's easier for most people to think up when doing intervals. So just what's a perfect fourth up from D? And that would be G. So I'll put it over here. I don't know why I drew it over here. That's not the G. This is the D7 chord. The key is G. Okay, so that's how you do that one. Okay, let's do one more. Let's stay in bass clef. We're given this note, and we're gonna say that that's the seventh of a five seven chord, okay? So again, start with your snowman. If that's the seventh, then we need the fifth, the third, and the root. Now, the seventh is a, maybe a little bit trickier than fifth, but still, we're still gonna use the same approach. We wanna just figure out the root first. You could go backwards and figure out the fifth and the third and the root, but I think it's easier to just get the root and then it's just like building any uh, seven chord from the root once you have the correct root. Because remember, we can't change this note. So don't start just building a C7 chord because then you get to the top and realize you would need a B flat and we can't change this note. So with a B, what do we know about a, a major minor seven chord? We know that this top note from the seventh up to the root, so I just took this note and I moved it up an octave, we know that that needs to be a minor seventh. This interval here needs to be a minor seventh. 
So if we invert a minor seventh, it becomes a major second. And then we know that this note to this note should be a major second. So then we just see what we have. B to C, well, that's a minor second. So that's no good. So we have to make it a major second. So we raise this note up a half step, and then we have our major second, because remember, we can't change this note. That was the given note. So C sharp. So now we have our root. Now it's a C sharp. Now we know we're just building a C sharp seven chord. And I'm going to write it over here since I have all that mess going on over there just to make it cleaner. I'm going to rewrite it over here. So C sharp, um, seven chord. So major triad, minor seventh. So we know that, uh, and we already know the seventh. And we know that a C chord is C, E, G. So then we know that a C sharp chord is C sharp, E sharp, G sharp. Okay, that was kind of the shortcut. Hopefully we know that by now. But again, you can just use your normal thing from theory one and do a major third and then a minor third or whatever your approach is to building chords. Okay, now we have a C sharp chord. Now in the, in the homework and in the self-test in the book, it has a dash below um, the chord. And remember, you're not putting the name of the chord there. In the directions, it says name the major key in which it would be the 5-7 chord. So if C sharp 7 is 5-7, what is 1 in a major key? So again, just uh, down a fifth or up a fourth. Um, if the sharp is throwing you, just think, what's a perfect fourth up from C? Well, that's F. So if a perfect fourth up from C is F, then a perfect fourth up from C sharp is F sharp. And so that would be the key that this chord is 5-7 in. Okay? So try a few of those in the, in the self-test in the book, and then in the workbook, page 105, you have some to do for homework. But again, mo most of this is basically from theory one, so we're just kind of tuning up on this. Okay, the next thing we're gonna look at is voice leading of the five seven chord. There's a couple different uh, approaches here, and at some point in the, in the book, in the homework, in the test, you're gonna be asked, to go from like a complete 5-7 chord uh, to an incomplete 1 chord or a complete 5-7 chord to a complete 1 chord. So we have to learn the different techniques of how to do that. Um, when we say uh, incomplete 5-7 chord, that usually means a doubled root, a third, no fifth, and a seventh. When we say uh, incomplete 1 chord, that usually means a tripled root uh, and a third and no fifth. Um, but let's let's give a few a try and, and you'll kind of see where we're coming from. So if we part right for four parts, let's just say we're going to do a 5-7 to 1 in C major. And we're going to just start with a complete 5-7 chord. So our 5-7 in C major will be a G7 chord. So we're in root position, so we'll have G at the bottom, and it's going to be complete, so we're not going to have any doubled notes because it's a seventh, so we're going to have a root, third, fifth, and seventh. So let's see, I'm going to try putting my third here, let's say, and then I'm going to put my fifth here and my seventh there. So I have G the root. B the third, uh, D the fifth, and F the seventh. Now, remember what I said earlier in the video? The seventh of the chord goes down, the third of the chord goes up. So we're gonna do that first. So here's the third of the chord, uh, B in the G major chord. So that is gonna go up to C. And the F here is the seventh, that goes down by step to E, which makes sense. E is in a C chord. And now we deal with the other two voices. The bass, there's nothing to, uh, there's no guessing game here. We're going root position to root position. So this has to be a C. So we have another C. And then the most logical place for this fifth to go, the D would also just be to go down 
to another C. So see how we've end up, ended up by following the rules. We ended up with a C, a C, a C, and an E, which is fine. This is good. We did everything correct, but just note that that is a incomplete, and the book's going to um, notate that with a little I in parentheses, an incomplete chord because we don't have the fifth. So the, in this version, we went from a complete 5-7 chord to an incomplete 1 chord, and that's perfect. We did everything right. We're just going to learn a few of the other versions also. Now, if you're asked to go to a complete one chord in this scenario, there's two ways to do this. The first way would be to make your 5-7 chord incomplete. And I'll show you how that will get you to a, a complete one chord. So to make it incomplete, again, anytime we're talking incomplete, we're 95% of the time we want to omit the fifth. There are other options, but that's going to be your go-to. Just We're talking omitting the fifth and doubling the root. Okay, so we're still going to have G as the root. And let's say we're going to double it right here and put another G. And now we need a third. So I'm going to put the third this time up here. A B, right? We're just doing a G, G7 chord. I'm going to a C chord. And then we just need our seventh because we're not doing a root. We're not going to have a D. We're, or, sorry, our fifth. We're not going to have a fifth. So we're omitting the D over here. So we need our seventh still. So the F. Okay, so that's our incomplete G7 chord. Two roots, a third, no fifth, and a seventh. All right, so do the two things I said right at the beginning of the video. Seventh of the chord goes down. Seventh is F, down by a step. Third of the chord goes up. Find the third B, goes up. Then deal with your root. No options here. We're going root position to root position, so this has got to go to a C. All right, and then you're left with only one note. Now, we want to go to complete. We have a C. We have another C. We have an E. We have root, root, third. So now we need fifth, and this is our, we need the fifth, and this is our one voice left over. It's a G. So what do we do? Well, that's easy. Common tone, carry it over, and that will complete our chord, G. Now we have two Cs, an E, and a G. Okay, so that's the way to get a complete one chord coming from an incomplete 5-7 chord. Okay, we were saying, well, Roger, I'm looking at the homework and there's uh, in the self-test and sometimes it says it wants a complete 5-7 chord going to a complete uh, one chord. How am I going to do that? Okay, here's the trick for that. If you look at page 222 in your text as you're doing this, right about the middle of the page, it has a 1 and a 2 and those are the two ways of going from a 5-7 to a complete one chord. Number one there is what we just did, uh, the rule for an incomplete 5-7 omitting the fifth and doubling the root. Number two is the one we will do right now. Use a complete 5-7, but put the leading tone, the third of the chord, in an inner part and frustrate its natural resolution by taking it down a major third to the fifth of the tonic triad. So this is the one case where you, the third of the chord does not have to go up. If it is in an inner voice, you have the option to what's called frustrate it by avoiding the natural tendency it has to go up by a step and put it down to the next chord tone in the one chord, okay? This can only be done if the third is in the inner voice, so an alto or tenor voice. Let's give it a shot. So complete 5-7 chord, but remember we have to put the third in the inner voice. So I'm going to start with... The G, and I think we can use our chord we started with over here because look, we had the third. That was the third, it was in an inner voice already. So let's use that same voicing. So third, fifth, seventh. So let's deal with this third first since that's the whole point. So instead of going it up, the big rule I taught you at the beginning of the lesson not to forget, you're going to frustrate it when going from a complete five seven to a complete one. So 
you're taking it down to the nearest chord tone in one. That will always be the fifth, but again, don't overcomplicate things and, and make yourself have to memorize more things than you need. Learn how to do it. Don't just memorize a bunch of things. So by thinking, okay, I just got to take this down to the nearest chord tone of one, or C chord, C, E, or G. So that would be G right here, okay? Then everything else goes as normal. The seventh of the chord is resolved down. The root still has to be the root. We're still in root position, both chords, so there's no options there. And now look, we have C, E, and G. We have a complete one chord. And here, you would typically bring this one down and just double the root. D to C. It could go up to E and double the E, but this would be a bit better, doubling the root. C, G, C, E. So now you have all of the options you're going to be asked to do, going from a complete 5-7 chord to an incomplete 1 chord, going from an incomplete 5-7 chord to a complete 1 chord, and going from a complete 5-7 chord to a complete 1 chord. Those are the three methods on how you do that. Okay, so I just showed you all of the 5-7 to 1 resolutions, and that's what happens 95% of the time, right? 5-7 goes to 1. Well, what is that other chord that 5 can go to? You know, that one that is deceptive, that deceptive cadence. Yes, you are correct. 5, 7, 2, 6 is a progression. What is? What are the voice leading rules for this? Well, let's take a look. Um, staying in the key of C, we'll build another 5, 7 chord. How about that same voicing? And this is just a rule to memorize. It's fairly simple, but um, it's just a rule to help you avoid any kind of parallels. Um, uh, root movement, remember the root movement, nothing's going to change there because we're going from root position five to root position six, which is usually how a deceptive cadence occurs. Both chords are in root position. So we've got to go from G to A. The third of the 5-7 chord, that rule doesn't change. The um, third will still resolve up. This is fine because these are in parallel, but they're in parallel thirds, so there's no rules broken there. So we have an A and a C. Now, the seventh also actually goes down, just like our rule. So the... F comes down to E. And now we have an A chord, or an A note, a C note, and an E note. So we have our full A minor chord, right? That's what we're resolving to, G7 to A minor. And all we've done so far is follow the rules. So now on this last note, you really have the option. Um, most of the times you would just step it down. So our resolution hasn't changed much on this one. There's not a lot to remember. It can still just come down to C, and there's no problems here. It doubles the third instead of the uh, root, but that's okay. In this case, it could have come down further to double. Well, not in this case, actually. It couldn't have because then we would have had some voice crossings, so it had to come down to the third. I would, I would do it light smoother anyway, not to jump around and do a little bit of a stepwise motion there. So it really resolves exactly the same way, except the bass. Um, bass and third step up, other notes step down. So it's actually easier to resolve a five, seven to six as opposed to a, as a five to six um, in four parts, because that extra note helps us out, okay? So one other small point I wanted to bring up that is in this chapter uh, is page 220. And it talks about the approach to the seventh. And if you're asked to discuss the approach to the seventh or how the seventh is handled, these are the terms you're going to use. So these are essentially terms we learned in the non chord tone uh, two chapters we just did. But there, we're just using the terms 
by the uh, shape of the movements. These are not actually non-chord tones. So that's why we call it a suspension figure and a passing tone figure and a neighbor tone figure and an appoggiatura figure. These are gonna be the four ways you're going to see the seventh of the chord handled. So again, I wanna emphasize these are not non-chord tones. We're talking about the seventh of the five seven chord, which is a chord tone, but we're just discussing it in a way of how it moves from chord to chord by using these terms we learned in the non-chord tone chapters. If this is the seventh of the chord, you know, we could have a, we could have a two chord here or something, and uh, sorry, not the seventh of the chord, this is the seventh of the five seven chord, and this is the note before the seventh, then this is the note it resolves to. Now, remember, the seventh is always going down. So in all four of these scenarios, we take our seventh, step down, seventh, step down, seventh, step down, seventh, step down. So it's just about the chord before it that's going to change, whether or not it's a suspension figure, passing tone figure, neighbor figure, or a appoggiatura figure. So again, just like a suspension non-chord tone, even though this isn't a non-chord tone, it's a chord tone, that we're using the term suspension based on the way this looks as same tone, step down and passing figure, just like a passing tone, even though this is a chord tone, step down, step down in same direction. And neighbor, step up, step down. And appoggiatura, leap, step in opposite direction. So we're using these terms, but they're not non-chord tones. They're chord tones. We're just looking at the shape of how the seventh is dealt with in comparison with the chord before it and the chord after it. If you look, here at the first example we did, I went ahead and I, I wrote in a two chord like this. So when you have your full texture, this is how you would do it. You would find your seventh. So this is our G7 chord. This is F, our seventh. You would look at the note before it in that voice, if we're following the voice, and the note after it. So same tone, step down, is suspension figure. All right, guys, that pretty much does it for chapter 14. It's not a real dense chapter. It's just practicing part writing 5-7 and understanding those things. Um, the homework is not real long. I would like you to, to kind of read the chapter, watch this video one or two times, and then do a couple self-tests in the book to make sure you understand, check your answers in the back, and then go ahead and just start cranking away on the homework. And let's uh, meet this week on Wednesday and uh, discuss it, and I can answer any further questions. But the self-test ones I would recommend doing right now is bottom of page 227. Uh, one's on page 228. And then bottom of page 228. Okay. Hope all is well. Talk soon. Take it easy.